Hey everyone, and welcome back to Millennial Mind. I am so excited to share this podcast with you because it is really like no other that I've ever done. All I request is for you to do me one tiny little favor. And if you haven't already, please press the follow, subscribe, and like button wherever you're watching or listening to this. I'm so excited to share this episode with you. So let's get into it. Joe. Hello. Welcome to Millennial Mind. Oh, thank you very much for asking me to, to, to be here and welcome to the Candle Studio. And thank you for having us here. Welcome. I mean, it's just so beautiful. I walked in and I was like, oh my God, the smell. And then I thought, actually, it's a candle studio, so obviously it should smell nice. <laughs> but you know, it's so funny. Normally when I tell people about my podcast guests, some people don't know who I'm interviewing. You know, no matter mm-hmm. how famous they are, no, how, no matter how big they are, every single person I told about you was like, oh my God, no way, <laughs> the Joe Malone. So oh. I'm very grateful to have you here. Well, happy when I, to share some stories. I'm excited. So when I was listening to so many of your podcasts and, and reading up about your story, your childhood was a very pivotal part, and I think in your journey. And so I want to kind of start there and talk around, you know, growing up and, you know, mm. were you always into fragrance? Yeah, so as a child, and um, we had this beautiful garden mm-hmm. where roses when I was young used to smell they used to have this like apricot peachy nectar kind of smell to them and um and we had kind of lots of herbs in our garden and everything but I can remember the smell of face creams being made because my mom was in the cosmetic industry so I would you know there was always a smell of lavender or juniper or you know oils burning and the wax is burning okay um and actually one of my i was asked this just recently i never focus on negative things in my life but what was the saddest smell i can remember as a child and funny the fact is it was uh when i was washing the sheets for my mum, and i would have been about 11 years old and it would have been midnight and all i can remember is taking the sheets for the next day taking them out of the twin tub, rinsing them, and, and the smell of laundry used to remind me that I was tired, if you, if you know what I mean. Oh. So it's all these kind of like little trigger smells. Mm. And then my dad would be, my dad was a brilliant uh, artist and a magician. Yeah. So he would make a magic trick and there'd be the smell of like fireworks coming <laughs> out of the garden. So it was a very creative family. Yeah. Um, and I knew my sense of smell was amazing, but I thought everyone, could smell like I could. I, I heard you have an extraordinary sense of smell, and I, I wanted to put you to the test. <laughs> oh no! What perfume am I wearing today? Oh, I, I, do you know I've got? I honestly have got hay fever like to tomorrow. <laughs> I wouldn't be. I can't smell a thing today. I purposely came in and said, "Give me one that she's not one hundred percent going to know because I want her to smell it." I, but if I'm honest, to give you the benefit of the doubt, it's you, you can't really smell me in here because the whole studio smells of this candle. <laughs> For the last four days, I have been on antihistamine. The no way. Hay fever has been tremendous awful and I can't I haven't been able to smell for four days so well, I'm wearing your signature um, Joe loves Joe oh, loves I'm I actually put it on when I came too. in are you I'm, I'm <laughs> I am um yeah so yes I do have a very good sense of smell so my nickname at home is bloodhound uh, and that's quite true smell. isn't it yeah it's absolutely true it's not an exaggeration what I, your name is bloodhound no my yeah. nickname your yeah. nickname yeah yeah my family called me bloodhound um because I can smell anything and I'll walk in and I'll go Who's been smoking in this house? Because we're a no smoking house. And, and Josh get, will look at me enough and say, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it was one of my friends. Or um, I, I always know if the dog is sick, I can smell her. And I know if she needs to go to the vets. My uh, yeah, I can smell most things. I know I went out onto the terrace the other day and I can smell the olive trees that are not well. And within three, four days, all their leaves were going yellow. I could smell something. It's like a superpower. I remember. I think it is my superpower, actually. It, yeah, is. it is. I remember you saying you could smell that your husband wasn't well. Yeah, down and his adrenal yeah. gland down there. Yeah, and it was, um, he had Addison's, so he had an adrenal failure, and that's what I could smell. So, yeah, I do trust my, my nose. I'm surprised after that story that all the hospitals haven't hired you as a consultant to be like, Joe, smell this person, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have gone down to Milton Keynes and had my nose tested with the dogs, and I came out in the top three. Uh, yeah, so I had to get oh in a gosh. pen with other dogs who can sniff like diabetes and all of those things. It's an incredible charity called uh, the Medical uh, Detection Do- Dog Detection. Okay. And they can sniff out like if you have severe diabetes, epilepsy, um, COVID. 
so I, w I wasn't tested with COVID. I think I was tested with something else they were testing. But I, yeah, I did come out with uh, 40 wow. dogs and I came out in the top three with the... So you can the, uh, smell all those things on um, people? I, I can't... Uh, so I think a dog can actually detect what it is you're looking for. I can see the difference. So if you put four things in front of me, I can then wow. smell the one that's different. But you wouldn't be able... Well, maybe you would be able to smell it. I don't know. It's presumptuous <laughs> of me, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I, I have a very, very, very good nose. And I have very good memory. So I can remember where I have smelt something. And so it will be like a visual picture in my mind. So this really is the perfect business for you. This it's, really is. It's my best friend. It's my language. <laughs> It's Amazing. what makes me happy and uh, what makes me feel fulfilled as a person, yeah. So when did you kind of start that journey then in terms of figuring out what you wanted to do? So I, I left school at 15. I have no qualifications. I started off in a flower shop, which in fact okay. uh, was just up the road. And the place you're sitting here right now was where I had my first job. So you're joking? I, no, I'm not joking. 16 years old. This is where, so this used to be the kitchens. And it was owned by a man called Justin DeBlanc, flower shop where um, Tom Tom's is now. Okay. And this was the delicatessen. And I got fired from the flower shop because I threw a bucket of water over someone. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> Very precocious child. Love this. <laughs> and I came up here to work. And this was where I fell in love with flavour. Where... So for me, flavour and scent are the best friends. They love each other. And eating well and smelling good are two of the greatest kind of things in life. And that's, this is where I really learned the trade. Um, and then I opened my first little business when I was just married, 21. Gary and I were, were to, just celebrated oh our 38th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Our, um, she's done, yeah, last week. Oh my and gosh. Um, we started out together and I had this little skincare business. And that was really where my sense of smell, I found a pace of life and I mm. saw, wow, I can do this and I can do this quite easily. But I've never trained as a nose, so I'm not a nose, but I have an incredible nose. What's the difference? Well, uh, when you're a nose, you train, you know, all the chemical kind of compounds and everything. Um, I didn't do any of that, but I have a natural ability to be able to take notes, smell them in my head and then recreate them. Oh my so, gosh. Uh, but I'm not a nose, and it's unfair to those people that have trained all those years. Yes, uh, you know, to to have that. Anyway, that's where my first little business started, and and I had my first little shop, as mm -hmm. uh, people remember, in Walton Street. And within five years, I had sold it to the biggest corporation in the world, Estee Lauder. Your name is everywhere, everywhere. It, it's in four corners of the of the world, that's for sure. Yeah, it, everywhere yeah. I go, I will always see Jo Malone. Everywhere. Is that weird for you? No, it's not weird for me anymore. I mean, I'm not part of... So I look at yes. it like there's a house here made of cream and black bricks. Okay. Okay. And inside there is nutmeg and ginger, lime, basil and mandarin. And then there's a house <laughs> here made of white and red bricks called Joe Loves, where Pomelo and Pink Fetty Bear live. Love and that. I'm in the middle, so I'm the mother of both. But um, I left Joe Malone a very, very long time ago. I mean, nearly... 15, 20 years ago, so a long mm -hmm. time ago, and left it in the safe hands with Estee Lauder. Yes. And then moved on. So it's not it's not strange to me actually at all because I'm used to it, I suppose. Yeah, it's and, pretty amazing though, no? Um well I built it from a little kitchen with exactly. two plastic jugs and a saucepan, so and it seeing gives, it everywhere. Gives hope to other people that they can do the same. Absolutely. You, you, you talked about selling it to SA Lauder, but what, what, why, why did that opportunity come about? Um, we were growing so... It's like any business, really. When you're growing, you have this little pool of money, mm -hmm. and it's like, do I put that into trademarks? Do I put it into legal? And we were growing so rapidly. And also, we were, two ki we were still two kids. You know, we you? were... I was 20... When we sold it? Uh, 96, 96, we sold it. Um, so a long, long time ago. Oh my gosh. Amazing. So one of those, uh, one of the reasons that I left was at 38 years old, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I was given nine months to live. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming home that night and thinking, no one's ever told you, Joe, what you're supposed to do in your life. You've mm -hmm. never listened to anyone. Why are you going to listen now? 
And um, so I decided that night that I would fight with everything that was in me. And I went off to New York City to live for 18 months. I went wow. to the Sloan Kettering mm -hmm. under Dr. Larry Norton. And I was one of the first women to take chemo every five days for over a year. That must have been really scary. I think first uh, of all, was, receiving that news. It was and grueling. Then, I had yeah. no hair. I had operation after operation. I was in intensive care, critical care every 10 days. Because what would happen is they would pump me full of chemo in order to kill the cancer cells. And my white cell, what's called your little neutrophils, which are little baby new cells, and my neutrophils would drop. So I could have, you can die from an infection from a cut on your finger. You know, your white cells are so important. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when it killed the cancer cells, it would also kill those. Yeah. Can I just say though now, if there's anybody going through breast cancer treatment or cancer, it's nothing like that anymore. Okay. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, I was part of that, that whole uh, routine. I mean, it was 18 years ago. So a long, long time. And change. people do not suffer and go through those things anymore. But it worked for me. But one of the things it did, and it, I didn't tell anyone this, is it took away my sense of smell. So I couldn't smell for about six months. And I didn't oh tell a soul, not gosh. even my husband, not even my doctor. Why? Because I was the creative director of a fragrance brand. Uh, but you had sold it at this point. I'd sold it, but I was still part of it. But that was one of the reasons I left. And when I walked away from uh, Joe Malone, London, all those, all those years ago, uh, I thought my sense of smell wasn't going to come back. And a month after leaving, I woke up one morning and I could smell everything. And I'd gone. Joking. Yeah. So, and wow. at that point, I have to say, it was like, what have I done? But, great lesson in life. You know something? Everything will work together eventually. Forget everything comes right in the end. And, and it did. Do you have any regrets? No, I don't, I don't look back. I have regrets of, actually I do have regrets. Not, not of things that have happened to me. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, I mean, I wish I hadn't had cancer, but of course. you know, I, I did and I learned a lot through that. Um, and I got a great set now, so I'm, I'm not that upset <laughs> by, by it. Um, I regret some of the things I've said to people. Okay. Those are my regrets, because I'm quite hot tempered. Same. And yeah, I'm a Scorpio, so I was born in Cancer. November. And um, sometimes I can be really cutting, and I regret that. And as I've got older, you know, I, sorry will be comes out of my mouth a lot more now. Mm -hmm. I'm older than when I was younger. I think I'm the same as you. That's why I said when I listened to some of your stories, I was like, gosh, I feel really similar to some of the things that you're saying because often when you I think when someone says something like mean or harsh or horrible, if they don't feel bad, that's more of an indicator, no, on themselves. So I think having that self-awareness is really important. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I don't suffer fools either. I don't think you do. I can see in your face. I don't <laughs> suffer fools. And if I don't agree with something or yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not slow in coming forward and saying, or if I can see yeah. injustice, actually, much more if it's aimed towards someone else. Yeah, same. I can't Agreed. bear that. Same. If it's aimed towards me, sometimes I think, I don't Okay, really can't care. be bothered, yeah. I can't be bothered. Yeah. But when I see something happening to someone else, then I'm, and or injustice, yeah, I don't like that. This is why another thing, because I'm very confrontational, and people always get very scared when I say that, and all I say is I'm a problem solver. So if I have a problem with you, I will raise it with you. Doesn't mean I'm going to be screaming or be no. aggressive, but I'm not somebody who's going to just walk away and say, yeah, everything was fine when it wasn't. No, I'm going to state how I feel. Um, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you around was you said in one of your interviews you're not a very good leader. Yeah. What did you mean by that? Um, I'm, I'm not... I, I, I don't run this business, okay? Mm -hmm. I create for this business. I am the visionary for this business. I do all of, all of the storytelling, all of the creative, and I push... But actual the day to day, I'm not good at leading people because I don't want to mentor anyone. I really don't. I have some opportunity there to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I'm not good at it because I want to take over the whole time. And actually, that isn't what a business needs. So I have a really good, strong, solid team yeah. that are really good at what they do. So um, 
this morning we had, you know, in this room we have MPD, new product development. Uh, Ellie's just been in here showing me some storytelling that we were doing. So that, in that respect, but I'm a loner. I don't have a desk. I don't, <laughs> the same. I don't have a desk. I don't have a computer. <laughs> I don't, I don't do have, have a PA. I don't have any of the things that I just often sit on my own with my notebook and my fragrances <laughs> and then I direct and, I, and I'm very good. But as a leader, um, I'm always too much in a hurry to get to the destination. <laughs> and I get really cross if someone can't keep up with me. We are the same person. <laughs> we are the same person. <laughs> We've already got, got family trees that come and do that with each other. Yeah, and I'm just, I get very exasperated and uh, like if we're doing something and I, I'll explain something in my head. They won't get it. Uh, no, actually the team surrounding me now, okay. they do. So I love a small tight team. So who's to my left or my right? Okay. Those are the two that really get who I am. Mm -hmm. And um, one is MPD and one is head of education. So Michelle okay. and Katrina. And then I, we have a wonderful... GM, uh, but yeah, they're, they're all good at leading. Gary is a great leader, so mm -hmm. I don't need to be. But, um, you know, so many times people say to me, would you like to do a mentoring pro? And the answer is no, I, and I'm not being mean. I just don't want to do it. I'm very upset by that. I really think you'd be a great mentor to me. But anyway, I actually was outside and I was speaking to Dorothy who works here, yeah. and she has some lovely things to say oh, about she's you. she's got the biggest smile, hasn't she? It's a house full of creativity. <laughs> and how long have you worked with Joe? Um, I've worked here since last September, so a couple of months. And you're already seeing all the magic. <laughs> Honestly, it's been amazing, and yeah, I just love it here. I want to know after obviously going through such a difficult time in your life. You know, you're 38 years old. You'd obviously acquired. You'd obviously, you know, got enough money to be comfortable for the rest yeah. of your life. Right? You didn't need to work a day in your life. And I yeah. think we are sold this narrative in school. I think people think I sell for a lot more than I really do. <laughs> Just, uh, I love that, though. Because yeah, people are like, you must be a trillionaire. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but I, th I don't think work is a job to me. or a This isn't a business. Yeah. This is my best friend. Yeah, it's I love. I love what I do. And, yeah. and I love all the storytelling and the adventure. And I, my life is one big adventure. Mm-hmm. You obviously went through this period in your life where it was really challenging. And we are sold this narrative of you have to work to then retire. So when you have enough money, you can chill out. And work is sold to us as something we just mm. have to do, mm. not something we want to do. Now, you've obviously got your sense of smell back now. Yeah. What was the next move? Because you had a five-year clause, didn't you? Yes. Where you couldn't create. Lockout. Yes. Which was agony for me. I can um, imagine. And I, was, I found that five-year lockout harder than fighting cancer. And I know that sounds such a bizarre no, thing, I but I didn't know what to do with myself. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a busy person. I've always been a busy person. And every day I get up, and you're right, I could have bought a big house on the beach. Yeah. I could have, um, you know, great for six weeks. And then it's like, I can't do Torture. this. Torture. I can't do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so I tried to, do, I made a television show for BBC called High Street Dreams. Okay. Came up with the concept. Um, I did a lot of charity work, which I thoroughly enjoyed mm -hmm. doing. And then I got to the point of, oh God, I've got to try it. Because once you've tasted that building of a global brand, it, it's a hunger. It mm -hmm. goes, it plays in your head. And I kept thinking, could I do it again? Could I do it again? Always that question in my head. And it was sitting one night at dinner. Josh was seven at the time. Okay. And I can remember it as though it was yesterday. I can remember what was on the table, what we were eating, everything. We were eating spaghetti. Okay. And my I favorite. said to my husband, I really want to start again. And he said, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. And, um, and your husband's your co-founder, right? Yeah. Yeah, partners, business partners. Amazing. So he's the CEO. I don't even have a title. I don't know what my title is at all. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, anyway, so, and this little fan goes up, Josh. He goes, Mum, Mum, I know what you should call it. And I said, what, darling? He said, call it Joe Loves because you love fragrance and fragrance is in love with you. And Joe no Loves way. is, from that moment, we had to spend, though, over a million pounds like a million and a half, I think it was, because we had to register Joe Loves across the world because we knew if we came out of the, you know, to run the race, 
Yeah. People would absolutely take Joe Love straight away and we wouldn't be able to trade in certain territories. So we had to, before one bottle was sold. My gosh. And I remember Gary looking at me one night and, say, and saying to me, um, are you sure? Are you really sure about this? I'm sure. And then, of course, those first two years of Joe Love's were agony, absolutely agony. So I regretted it every single day. Can of, imagine. And, of course, by that point, you're like two million quid in, and it was our own money. It was no one else's money. But, how, you know, when, when do you step back? What, what do you do? Do you keep going? And he said to me, one more week, one more week. And then I'd go, right, that's it. I've had enough. I don't want to do it. I'm, uh, um, I'm going to be a hairdresser. I'm going to go and I grow a vineyard. I mean, it's bizarre. <laughs> Stupid thing. One more week, one more week. And then, uh, then he gave me the shop here. And it was when we came back to the shop, of course, where I had my first job at 16, yeah. that's when the destiny changed and she became, um, I always, I look at it, when, when we came here, she was grown up, but those beginning stages, it was like teenage years with a brand and, you know, the kid comes home with blue hair and everything, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong in the beginning. What went wrong? The worst. Got the packaging, packaging wrong in the beginning. Uh, if you look online, you'll see red, awful red boxes. I don't know why <laughs> I did that. I was trying to be so different that I became not myself. Yeah. Uh, distribution wasn't right. Um, and we found it, you know, very, very difficult to mm. open because Lauda are a very, and still are a very powerful force. And um, they did not want us in the marketplace. I can imagine. And well, still don't. But I'm there. And you're fighting. And I don't have to fight. I'm just going to use my creativity. But, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's not been an easy road to travel, that's for sure. When listening to your story, I can just hear that you have so much strength within you, with everything, whether it's when you started Joe Malone, whether it's when you fought cancer, whether it's when you're building Joe Loves from scratch. You know, starting a business is incredibly difficult. Yeah. And I'm at a place right now where sometimes I just think, oh, God, this is so hard. How am I ever going to get there? It's so difficult. I think that still. And it and everyone I speak to says it's never going to end. And sometimes you think, when is this ever going to end? But what is it that gets you through? Because there's going to be people listening and watching this that are going to think, well, because you had Joe Malone, then starting Joe Loves must have been so simple and easy, and you knew what you were doing and had all the contacts in the world, and it yeah. was different. So why would anyone try to block you? So. Um, well, I, th I think whenever you get creativity and you get somebody with passion, you know, I, I believe the three greatest things are passion, resilience and creativity. Mm -hmm. You've got to feel passionately about what you do. Mm -hmm. You can't be frightened of tough times because that resilience builds muscle, okay. business muscle on you and you become like a warrior. And then your currency of creativity is the most powerful thing that you have. So those, you know, those kind of three things. But the two businesses were in different moments in time. They, I was a different person. I could smell differently. I was a completely different person to the one I, young girl, who started. Of course I was. It was yeah. all those years on. Experience had changed and the marketplace had changed. So of course everything was different. Now if I, if I launched a third business, not that there's one on the table, <laughs> but if I did, I would be so much more relaxed. And I think I spent so much of my time living in the future, I forgot to live in the moment and that's where a lot of my mistakes happened what do you mean by that where i was always looking for tomorrow what's the what's the vision out there i mean it's important to have your vision and look mm -hmm. but i was so far detached from what i was achieving to where i was trying to get to mm. i was i was missing really like like the packaging yeah. i was so desperate to go from here to a global brand i didn't i didn't look at who i really was and actually the brand you see the little red dot and the white now, I had to go back, relook at who I was, and that's when it all started to feel right again. Amazing. Um, what other mistakes did I make? <laughs> distribution. So yeah. running into distribution without being ready. Uh, so our first opening of Joe Loves was in Selfridges. Okay. And we had four fragrances and two candles. And I had nothing in the pipeline ready to, to go again. I was just like, no, 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 I just want to... I just want to go jump straight in the water. And uh, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot of humility during that time. Uh, but I think business, 
business is ever changing. And we say that we're living in a time now where business is so different. Business has always been different. Business has always been changing Mm. and ever evolving. And you have to, if you want to be successful, especially globally successful, you have to be prepared for that change because each territory that you walk into, each country will have different cultures, different beliefs, different ways of communicating. And so that ever evolving change is vital Mm -hmm. to a successful business. You said you came here and everything changed for you. First of all, was this store intentional that you bought it? Uh, It was my birthday present from my husband. Yeah, and he knew, yes, he knew. That is so sweet. So I sat there on that step out there on my birthday morning, which is the 5th of November with the key, eating a bacon sandwich. And I walked into this room and I heard my soul say, in this place, you will change the world again. It will happen here. And I heard it. You're joking. And I've got a goosebumps. I look now at my life and it is happening. I am global and it is changing. And this business is getting bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. And I'm, I'm becoming happier. I'm the happiest I think I've ever been in my life at this moment. It comes across. You're I feel such an amazing energy. Energy. I feel you an are. energy. Now, if, you, if we'd done this interview two years ago, I don't think that energy was there. If I'm, I'm happy really I waited then. Yeah. I'm happy I was patient. What changed when you came here in terms of making it into a global brand? Because there's going to be people that are listening thinking, okay, well, what do I need to do? How can I make my brand into a global brand? <laughs> if only I could give you a list of 10 things and say just do A magic it. wand. <laughs> and, it'll, and it'll work. I think, um, so I got a little compass and I think the compass is very much uh, related to the success. Uh, they all begin with eyes because the okay. only person that's responsible for making anything work is yourself. Don't, don't ask somebody else to take the response. You have to take them. So inspiration. I needed to find inspiration, be inspired mm-hmm. in order to innovate and be creative. So my mission every single day is to find anything and make my mind work in a very agile way. And now that agility that I have in my mind is my best friend And it's with me every single day, which has caused me to do the shot candle, the paintbrush, all the things, and all the tapas bar, um, all of those things. So those two. uh, The third one is ignition. What ignites? What are the product that's like? How do we ignite? How do we tell those stories? Mm. How do we make people just feel on fire with excitement the same way that I do? Um, The fourth one is integrity. We've got to do it with truthfulness and realness. And if something goes right, allow your team to step up with you. If something goes wrong, you have to be, as the owner, the first one that steps forward and says, this is my responsibility. And so that building that integrity and that integrity within your teams. Um, And I think that's probably one of the hardest things. Mm. And the last one is gut instinct. What just going to ask you that. Yes, that <laughs> gut instinct. What does your gut tell you? And sometimes I can be sitting in here in a meeting and it will be a distributor or it will be someone and my gut goes, no. Because if I can't tick at least three of those eyes with someone, we're not meant to be working together. And I can be the only one that will turn around and say, you know, thank you so much. I'm not sure it's the right time yeah. for us. So make sure those you partner with. Um, and that instinct of what 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 products go to market who we partner with building your team that gut instinct on how to build a team and for us at the moment what is happening is we're missing we're growing so quickly mm-hmm. that we're going from here whereas a natural progression in a business is is almost like that isn't it yes we're going from there to there to there to there mm-hmm. so those growth periods huge. Are, are huge are huge and they're huge on your team uh, because they're having to grow, you know, instead of producing 1,000 bottles, 10,000, you're suddenly producing 500,000. And it's a switch. It's mm-hmm. a big switch. Um, financial, everybody has to, you know, look at, at your finances mm-hmm. and how uh, cash flow, lovely word. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> hate anything accounting. <laughs> um, yeah, cash flow. And, uh, and so growth, you, you have to manage growth in a way where people... But I, I think you, you take the growth no matter what mm-hmm. and you catch up. Because otherwise, you're, you're, you, if you keep to the pace of everybody else, you're never going to make it. 
I've never seen so much innovation than I have today. I was shocked by the tapas menu. Yeah. And by the shock handle. Yeah, that's great. That's it's patented. Just sat down and seen this fragrance tapas menu. Lovely Dorothy. Hi. It's going to explain what it is. So what does it start with? So, um, first of all, we start off with an introduction of the brand and our brand story. Okay. And we go through every single fragrance so you can see, like, what you like, what, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not a fan of, everything. So we go through all of that so we can um, identify your favourite fragrance. Yeah. And then we go on to the more sensory experience part. So we put our shower gels in here with some water and ice. No way! Shake it up <laughs> and we put it into the martini glass. You can't actually drink it. Okay. Um, so, but it is a great way to try um, the products like you would in your bath. Okay. So, and then we put our bath colognes in here with some hot water, let it steam mm. up in there. Okay. And then we open it up. I don't know what's in here right now. And like steam should come out. Amazing. And it's just such an amazing experience. And then last but not least, we paint you with some fragrance. No and we way. paint you with some lotion as well. So put some lotion on you and we top it up with um, your favorite fragrance. So it's like Amazing. fragrance layering. And yeah, that's basically the fragrance tapas. So when is mine starting? Um, <laughs> like, we can do it now if you want. <laughs> so what is the shock handle? So the shock handle is the first patented candle, can you believe? So this is the shot. Okay. And this is the base. Okay. And they're two different smells. So you can choose every, so it's like storytelling. So we can have anything from something like a mm. lemongrass, okay. log fires, a petit grain, a orange blossom, and then we fuse the shot into the candle. You push it down. So you can come and come in here and we have candle cocktail parties. <gasps> and look, it's completely closed. And well, once you've, once you've um, sealed it with a Bunsen, oh, with a um, blowtorch, and push it down and then what happens is it starts to to melt and you get the first note and then because the bevel of the of the shot it changes the whole time and so it is yeah it's like a little amazing um, this is like what you said in terms of food because often we mix flavors yeah so it's like an ice cream like i would mix a mango with a hazelnut so this one is rose petal and fig trees. Oh so God, these are amazing. little things that we do. See, so that's that your shot. In. And what's that one here? Oh, wow. And this one is, I uh, can't even remember. Can't and it's the first patented says. candle. Yeah. Oh, charcoal lemons and log fires. So if anyone ever feels that they want to give up, you can get the first patented candle after you can create two global businesses. <laughs> there you go. Amazing. Intuition is something that I always talk about because I believe that it is my greatest teacher in life. And my number one saying, I've said it a million times on this podcast, is energy doesn't lie. I think I should patent that and put it on a t-shirt or something. I really don't believe that mm. when you meet somebody, the they can lie. be as nice as oh, they I want, love that. But, th there, but there can be something yeah. and you're like, no, no. And energy doesn't lie. You, you can say mm. the sweetest words. You can give the best gifts. But often, when you're with someone, you know mm. if they make you feel good. You know if you walk away from that conversation feeling uplifted or you walk away feeling drained. So how do you kind of figure out when to listen to your gut and when it's fear? Because that's what oh. people often ask me. Is, are you scared? Am I, sca are you, am I scared of? So often when people say to me, but you know you're saying you're, you've got a bad intuition. That could be driven out of fear. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or it could be, you know, a preconceived notion that you're wrong about. Mm. Like you could be making an assumption. Um, yeah, that's a, that. Help. Let me have a, let me have a think through those um, those answers. So, I'm never really fearful of because um, I'm quite I'm confrontational as well. I know, and I, I would tell. rather have a ten minute conversation worth something mm -hmm. than an hour of talking of drivel. Same. And I think you know, like when we go, and, we all go and sit and have dinner, and you you've got a person that you may never see again yeah. in their life. You know what? Just be interesting and interested because that's it mm -hmm. and business is the same um and i think when especially when we're employing people the team will do all the conventional um interviews mm -hmm. uh with with everything then i will come in if they're on my team i don't really care about the cv i don't care about anything i want to know about you what what is, what is the greatest moment of your life okay. um you know what color depicts your character 
what, you know, what was, what was the saddest thing that ever happened to you? Mm. And what was the first thing you did to make yourself smile? Because what I'm looking for is that realness, that humanness. Mm -hmm. And I'm more interested in that part because all the rest of it, I, I can teach you that. Exactly. I can teach you how to make a candle, paint with fragrance. I mean, Dorothy, when she first came, was so shy. Really? And Dorothy now is just this beam and she never stopped smiling. And the letters we get from customers saying what an incredible um, person oh, wow. she is as she's serving, you know, and, and wonderful. And for the pa person to take that moment to write a letter to say thank you to us. So, you know, all the rest of it you can learn and you can teach, but those, those gut instincts I think are, are very important. But, how, but we've all met people who, so I had this big saying that one bad apple can rock the crate. Agree. One good apple can build an orchard. Also agree. And I am about the orchard builders. Love that. Not the crate rotters. Yeah. Um, and I've had my fair share of both. Because people's words can really affect you. I was thinking about this this today. People's worst. Words. Words. So yeah. people's energy, people's words, yeah. what they say to you. So if you've got someone in your team that's lifting everyone up, they can lift everyone up. And, you know, mm. the other day I was feeling a little bit demotivated. I've started a new YouTube channel and I'm getting like 77 views on it at the moment, right? And I'm thinking similar to you, you know, I've built my podcast. It's done really well. I've got a big following on Instagram. Why have I got no views coming on this new thing I'm doing? And someone commented saying, Shivani, I really like your videos. You've got to keep going. And I yeah. thought, you know, when you're running a race and someone just pushes you along or gives you that little energy tablet, I was like, oh, that's like a little energy tablet. And it's a random person on YouTube. I got three comments on that video, Aww. but it really meant so much to me. And I think that we often forget how much our words and our actions can impact mm. others. And if you're somebody who's always looking for the negative in things, if you're someone who's always allowing the bad things to happen to you in the world, you know, because there's bad things that happen every day. You cut, I mean, listen, I got cancer. I didn't exactly. deserve it, but it did. But I came, I bounced myself. I sometimes think you sometimes have to bounce yourself out of situations. And I suffer from anxiety mm -hmm. because it's, it's a flip side to creativity and I can normally bounce myself out of situations and make myself look at it but remember never ever quit on a bad day mm -hmm. because you never quit on a good day so true and sometimes those days where you feel like you're building your YouTube and you're climbing this and you're holding on with your fingers mm -hmm. and I I can assure you I felt that if you're going to quit and you're going to change the course of something, mm -hmm. make sure you are standing in a place where you can see the whole landscape. Because you know what? Landscapes can change. In, and when I say the landscape, the landscape of your YouTube channel. And you know, so keep going, keep climbing. Mm -hmm. Don't quit today. Not today. Not, not at this moment. And find something every single minute that makes you think, okay, I'm going to get to there and then I'm going to stand and I'm going to look at the landscape. And then you know what happens? One day you get up and you're standing on the top of the mountain and you can see everything. And then you think, oh, if I hadn't have kept going, I would never, my feet would never be standing in this place. And I've lived my life like that. You're going to make me cry. That was so <laughs> nice. I'm literally like, oh. <laughs> I'm going to clip that and then watch it every single day whenever I want to give up. So, well, or just call me. Or just call Aww. me. And I'll, and I'll so you are going to be my mentor now. See how to change gonna her mind. Be, I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to be your friend. Um, but, though, you know, those things in, because we all go through that. Do. It doesn't matter who you are, mm -hmm. how successful you are, how much money you're making. We all go through those, have I done the right thing? Have, I, have we done... You know, we, we, we've got a product, but it's not selling. Yeah. And you just have to keep going. You can't, you can't quit. Uh, you can change directions. Yeah, you can pivot. And you can pivot. And sometimes, again, I've got this big belief that you always have three choices. You know, when someone says, oh, you know, I'm, I just feel I have no answers or no choice. You always have three choices. You can either stay in the situation and put up with it. I'm not very good at that one. Neither. <laughs> you can walk away. I walk away completely. I'm not good at that one. Neither. <laughs> but the best one is you stand the ground and you change it's your mindset. Yeah. And but you don't walk away from the situation. You hold your ground. And sometimes standing still, you don't always have to be growing, growing. Standing still and holding the, that ground. And then when you're ready, you'll move forward. I love that. It's also something related to that. I always ask myself: If I was doing this in a year's time, am I going to wish I changed something? 
you know, do you want to be in this position in a year or two years? And if I do, but there's something I want to change, then change it. Yeah. You know, if you want to change something, you have the power within you. What was it? Einstein's uh, theory of uh, lunacy okay. uh, was why do we do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result? So and true. that that is so true in business. Like if when you're a small entrepreneurial business, you're quite agile. Yeah. When you go bigger and become global, you you're doing something and you think it's not working. It's not. But I tell you what, let's push the button and do it all over again. Instead of going, hold on a minute, that's that that top doesn't feel right and it's coming off in the thing. Right. Let's put a magnet in the top in there so that that bottle, it, it, so it holds, which actually... Oh, is that why it that, is? Yeah. It, oh, it, it, it stays on the... It's all those little things, those attention, you know, that attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Lovely pomelo. Um, that attention to detail and all those kind of little little things that, that make a brand so agile. And, uh, but if you see something that's not working, sit down with your team and figure it out. Um, one of the things that, that we're looking at at the minute is this, you know, whole sustainability and the responsibility that we have. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, somebody came up with the idea of dust bags instead of boxes. And we've, I'll show you them at the end. These beautiful dust bags. I, I now don't want any of my products in boxes, or gifts. And we put all red tissue paper and there's a beautiful quote on the back. And these beautiful dust bags. And it was like, and number one, they're cheaper than the box. But Amazing. there's something you're going to keep, you'll put your makeup in. They're gorgeous, aren't they, Anna? Can't wait to see. And uh, so all these little little things, you know, keep evolving, keep changing, and, and get used to feeling uncomfortable in your business because mm -hmm. that actually is very healthy. This is my favourite thing okay. at the moment. So with uh, sustainability comes responsibility. And, of course, yeah. we are, you know, people love our boxes and how things are packaged, but I really... I really feel so strongly that we've really got to rein it in a, a bit. So this is this wasn't my idea. This was uh, part of our MPDs, um, and these are these gorgeous little dust bags. And yeah. so this is the way. If you're receiving a present from me, this is how you'll get it in future. And it's got a little quote on the back which says, "Scent has the power to unlock memories and moments in your life." Um, and I so we'll be that. doing all these at Christmas, and it comes. It's got Amazing. also little goodies, and I love that. How incredible. I feel really proud of that one. You should. Incredible. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh. I, I was going to ask you, what was your one piece of advice? But you've just summed it up so perfectly. And you've motivated me, inspired me <laughs> so much. I'm so grateful to have oh, had this so conversation welcome. with you. Yeah, Thank so, you so you're much. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. That's so so lovely. lovely to meet you. Lovely. A nice interview. Did you enjoy Thank it? You. I, did. Good. I did. Thank you so much. I know you've got a busy day now. <laughs> I've got a million things to do. And the next. No, I loved it. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Next Let time me... you're back, we'll do a bit more. Thank you. your videos, by the way. Oh, do you? <laughs> well, this is, this is going to be a lovely podcast. It was, I was so sick. Here we go. Do you want to put me in the skin? Yes. Can I just get a um, pen?